Hello, my name is Peter Erskine, and I'm very excited, happy, and honored to be here in Hong Kong for the first Hong Kong International Drummer Festival. And I am here with my new trio. The new trio has actually been playing together for about five years. Um, the bass player is my nephew. His name is Damien Erskine. He's a wonderful musician. And the pianist is named Vardan of Sepien. Uh, I called it my new trio so people would understand it was a different group from some of the other piano trios I have, uh, I have led. Uh, what makes the new trio new is that uh, it's a piano trio with electric bass. Damien is a wonderful electric bass player. Our first recording was called Joy Luck. And if you can see the uh, cover there, it has a rather Chinese looking design and motif. And of course, the title Joy Luck comes from Joy Luck Club, uh, the great book written by the author Amy Tan. Um, so it somehow seems quite appropriate, and we're very honored to be here in Hong Kong. We will be playing music from Joy Luck, as well as music from a, bro uh, from a brand new album, uh, which will be released uh, in a couple of months. Uh, that has more of a Japanese motif, and that is uh, uh, named In Praise of Shadows. Well, the first song I played as a young professional, it might have been uh, uh, Sing Sing Sing. Uh, that's the classic uh, Jean Krupa song with the, uh, you know. Um, a Tom Tom solo. Uh, and in fact, my very first drum set. Uh, it's so nice to see this drum because I had a drum uh, quite similar to this, just a little bit smaller. Uh, and my drum set consisted of a Chinese tom-tom and a Cuban conga drum and one small cymbal. And I used to play along with recordings uh, from my father's uh, vinyl LP collection. Now, he'd been a bass player when he was younger, but he was a doctor by the time I was born. Um, out of four children, I was the one who really wanted to play music and uh, so I was very lucky to grow up in a, uh, in a house and with a family that uh, supported uh, my becoming a musician and when, when I was becoming a musician that meant becoming a drummer and uh, when you become a drummer uh, you make quite a bit of noise because the drums are not uh, like a flute, they're not so quiet. Um, but I've been playing the drums now for 56, 57 years. It's a long time. Uh, if, if you go online on the internet and you look up older photos of me um, from the late 70s or early 1980s, you'll see that I had my symbols positioned uh, almost at a 90 degree angle, uh, almost uh, vertical, <clears throat> uh, and, and raised up quite high. Uh, you know, funny thing happens when you get older, the, everything gets lower, and uh, this includes symbols. Uh, so now my setup is, is more horizontal, it's easier to reach. Uh, it was a fashion, it was a style in the late 70s and early 80s, and we liked playing and getting very physical. Uh, that's one of the attractive things about drumming. It's a very physical uh, way of making music. I'm a little bit more cerebral these days. Even though I've played with a lot of different groups 
over the years, or perhaps because I've played with so many different groups over the years, I've learned that it's most important to play for the song. And I play for the other musicians. Uh, when, when you're young, you, you play for yourself and you're trying to uh, figure out how to play. You're wrestling with the instrument. And you're wrestling with uh, your ego and your identity. Um, and then as you, get, uh, as you get older, you realize uh, it's more about playing what you would like to hear, not so much what you want to play. You know, so uh, I always just try to imagine I'm listening to the music. And so then that makes it very easy for me to make a musical choice. You know, drumming is, is, is one of those uh, forms of expression where uh, the drummer, you know, he or she uh, has infinite choices. We, we can make choices all the time during a song. Play a little louder, play a little softer, play a syncopation here or play it there, uh, play ahead of the beat or behind the beat, play exciting, play calm. Uh, experience helps, uh, helps you make better and better choices. Uh, so uh, the fun thing about getting older is that um, you become a little bit smarter, and 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 so making music, uh, it becomes easier and and I think better. Uh, so I don't worry about not being good or getting better as I get older. I know I'm getting better as I get older, which is fun because there's not a lot of things where th that's true. You know, uh, many athletes, you know, they're best when they're young. But I think musicians can be best uh, also when they're older, I hope. Uh, he also plays the drums. Uh, Damien started out playing the drums, and, and uh, uh, two of my nephews started out as drummers, but then Damien uh, became attracted to the bass, I think because he spent a lot of time uh, with my father who was a bass player, and, uh, and so that was a stronger influence. And I'm very glad he plays the bass, because he's a wonderful bass player, and I get to play with him. If he played the drums, I couldn't be in the same band with him. Jazz has changed insofar as uh, we don't quite have the same opportunities for traveling and playing the music night after night uh, as existed maybe 50 years ago. Uh, we don't have big bands uh, uh, where young musicians could get professional experience right out of school. Um, there are not so many jazz clubs. You don't hear jazz as often in, in everyday life, like we used to when we were young. But uh, this, of course, has, has created an opportunity and a responsibility for schools to provide the setting. Um, at the same time, jazz education has become uh, better. You know, we, teachers are doing a better job teaching students, so uh, young musicians are playing great, far better than, than the way I played when I was the same age. Um, is it too academic? Well, I don't know. You know, I think everyone just does the best they can, and, and you play the music wherever you can. So maybe it's played more in schools than in jazz clubs. Uh, but that's okay. There's less uh, less to uh, less smoke from tobacco and uh, not so much alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> Um, 
gospel chop strumming is, is, uh, is kind of a phenomenon of, of the internet. And, um, <laughs> you know, on the internet, uh, what's popular? Uh, videos of cats, uh, gospel chop drumming. Yeah, I mean, uh, so, uh, you know, uh, a gospel chop drummer can, can post or, or, or a friend will post something on the internet and uh, many people will see it. So it's, uh, the internet is, is what we call in English a double-edged sword. There's good things about it, but there's also not good things. You know, we have no control over what people might see, but if we know how to take advantage of it, um, it's a very quick way for someone to be heard and noticed. And so with Gospel Chops, uh, uh, I think we could characterize it as, as drumming with, uh, uh, with, with, with extreme technique. And I think it's great because uh, any extreme technique pushes the boundaries of what's possible. Um, so I, I enjoy it. I mean, I, I won't sit and listen to it for very long because it makes my ears tired. Um, and it's not my favorite style of music, but I, th I think the drummers are all really exciting. And I think it's excellent. Boys and girls, you are watching musicinmusic.com at musicinmusic.com. Please come back for more exciting music at musicinmusic.com. This is Peter Erskine, where, uh, by the way, you can find me at www.petererskine.com. By the way, since I have your attention, um, this is my latest album called Dr. Um. And I will come back to Hong Kong and we'll do another interview about this album. And uh, I hope we can spend more. You know, I don't have to come back to Hong Kong. We could do a Skype or uh, if you want to send me questions, I'll be happy. I'd be very happy to appear uh, on musicandmusic.com uh, as many times as you'll have me. Okay? Thanks for watching. <laughs>